worst part. Understanding that dark matter is always connected to its source, which is that realm where the dark matter came from, the realm that's all around us. Just imagine that dark matter being the ocean, right? Imagine this realm being the submarine. We're all in the submarine having fun, and we're, we're doing our thing, and we have disagreements here and disagreements there. And then um, we find out there's a hole in the sub, but the hole is not, we thought the hole was in the sub, but it wasn't in the submarine itself. It was, in fact, in the people. The people's water inside their bodies began to increase based on their emotions. Let's just say that. And the dark matter can then come into this realm through people. That's, in fact, what they discovered in 1950, that people can also produce dark matter by way of, it's very minute, it's very tiny, but it's measurable. It's quantifiable. In fact, they now know how much energy a person has to have before they go absolutely berserk. They also know how much uh, of that energy signature a person must have before an entity from that realm can possess them, which also allowed them to understand that not everybody can be possessed. Not everybody can be, but they're, they're, the, the person has to be prepared to be possessed. They have to be, in, in essence, they have to be a portal themselves to be possessed. Not everybody can be possessed. And so, not, not to get way off target, but this dark matter is everywhere. That is, that you know what, all these things, here's what, I mean, it really, it really gets to me, is that these scientists, over the course of many years, have quantified, or they have calculated these things. They have extracted the truth, the facts, yet the Christians don't believe it. And these crooked people in certain places have already been harnessing this power for themselves, and it's been effective every single step of the way. Yet the Christian community, for some reason, has a mental block on certain things of God as though they have all the time in the world. To, you, know, you know, I will say this, and then I'll get back to CERN, that if a person trusts their father, they don't need the father to explain everything. They, yeah. just, need the, they just need to know that the father said it. And they'll go do it. If, if you tell a child, go, you, know, you need to go rake the yard, a child's not going to sit there and say, well, what brings you to that conclusion? A child's not going to do that. You'll just go out there and rake the yard. Over time, you'll find out why, but you have already performed what the Father said. And But in the Christian community, we have to know why everything is before we do anything. In the scientific community, they see the facts they know they don't understand it fully, and so they have experiments, and they learn along the way. In fact, they're obedient to their own disciplines, and we're not obedient to our own disciplines. So the problems about CERN, I know everybody's waiting on this. What could potentially happen from this? Well, they had another discovery, that dark matter causes other pieces of dark matter that they have contained to to react. In other words, if you have a container, say you had a, a, a teaspoon of dark matter, and in, in, let's just say you had it in Pennsylvania, and somebody else had that same uh, a teaspoon of dark matter in California, then as soon as the teaspoon of dark matter is exposed to the elements in Pennsylvania, it causes the dark matter in California to begin to activate. In other words, you lose containment in one place, containment in another place is going to be lost. It's going to be lost. So they're intimately tied together. Now, we've covered the fact that people have the signatures of the energy of dark matter in them and matter. So they contain both matter and antimatter, in a sense, the signature of energy. They're not put together. It's just that signature. And we draw upon those based upon our thoughts and what's in our minds and what's in our hearts, in a sense. With CERN, as they begin to collide these protons, dark matter is going to be produced in great numbers. I mean, in greater and greater numbers. Not only the matter, but the energy signature. 
is going to also be released into this realm. You know what that's going to cause? It's going to cause the dark energy signature within people to begin to activate more and more. You see, it's going to become difficult for people to stay contained or controlled. In essence, they're going to become violent. They're going to become, they're going to have vivid dreams. The darkness within a person is absolutely going to begin to surface. And it's, this is not uh, theoretical. This is not uh, uh, some theory somebody thought of. This is absolutely 100% quantifiable, and it's happened before. It's going to happen in greater numbers this time. It's going to, it will take effect. That's also been weaponized. Nobody knows this, and I, I probably won't be in trouble for this, but they have a weapon concerning dark matter that they can put within a country or a specific place to cause chaos. It's a weapon. They've used it before. They can unleash this, and it can cause chaos anywhere they want chaos to be rampant. Also, there's something very important about that. There, I know this firsthand. There are often times you have to partake in the weapons development program, and you become a, a rat, so to speak, in a maze to see firsthand what the effects are going to be. I'll describe something. People can believe it or not, but sooner or later they're going to experience it too. I am a Christian. I know that Jesus died on the cross for the remissions of sins and now sits at the right hand of the Father, soon to be sent to us again. I rely on the blood of the Lamb. I am, you know, as a soldier, I count my Lord and Savior as my commander. And so I am used to taking orders and to operate life or death in those orders that he gave. That's the only thing that saved my life one day. I was thrust into a position where I had to absolutely 100% fight to keep my flesh under full subjection. I could not believe the intensity of what was happening. My thoughts were all over the place. It, it, it was almost like every evil thing that was in me came to the surface with a snap of a finger. Irritation, aggravation, anxiety, fear, uh, just anger, hatred, all sorts of things. And the snap of a finger. The only thing that kept me still, the challenge was to be still. The only thing that kept me still, I had to absolutely 100% focus on the Lord. I had to focus on him. It's the only way to overcome that is to focus on him and place the flesh under subjection. If a person's out there and they say, well, I have no power to control myself. Yes, you do. You don't want to control yourself. Believe me, that power is within you. is given through the Holy Spirit. I felt the power, the protective power, the blood of the Lamb and the Holy Spirit during that test. I was amazed. I didn't know this could be harnessed in that way. I did not know, but it happened. And this was a weapon. This was a mild weapon. And you have to cling. People have to cling to the Word of God and His promises. Most importantly, his instruction. You know, not one time when I was in that test, I didn't think about his promises. I thought about his love. That's what I thought about. And when I began to think about his love, something happened within me. Everything came under subjection as though it took no effect. That's what happened. They found the force that holds the dark energy or the dark matter away from this realm. They call it the wall. There's another name for that, a name of which that, that those particles they're going to find, they found part of it. They're going to find the other pieces that are in that wall. And when they find the other pieces to this wall, they will then be able to undo that wall. There's another name for that wall, the veil. Call it the veil. It holds back that realm. They found out what's holding back the dark energy from, because it would be absolutely destructive if the two met. But they found out, now with this as a weapon, there is no counter weapon to this. China is building an LHC facility. They're building a particle accelerator. 
there are, to present day count, about uh, 14 particle accelerators in existence. 14, not just one. All the countries are vested in the CERN facility, every single last country. But the United States, we have three facilities here. Three. I, I can't tell you where they are. One is, one, they began to build, but they couldn't, but they went ahead and built it anyway. It's in one of the biggest states in the United States, and it's there and it's operational. It's also going to be powered up during this time. I'm saying this because when this thing does power up, the immediate effects are not what I'm worried about. That's not my concern. The psychological effects on people is going to become quite evident. And I know that people will come under some strange attacks some strange occurrences and incidents. I know that the only way they can be protected from such things is their unqualified belief in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You can't fake it. There is no substitute. People know if a person is real or not because they emit a different energy. That energy is that wall that the this other realm cannot breach. It can't breach it. And they're, they're, it's absolutely going to take effect. The, the collider, it, it, think of a collider as a um, hundreds of nuclear explosions taking place within one second, and they're containing it. It goes beyond fusion. It's in a realm by itself when they collide protons. They are going to find these particles, and within months, they're going to put into motion what we talked about today. And people are going to feel these effects. And in this other realm, it's going to begin to spill over in multiple places everywhere. Violence will increase. The, the crucial side of this is that uh, with this show coming up, people are going to realize all too painfully uh, what we've talked about today. But they have to start now. They, they really have to. They can't make excuses for their flesh anymore. They cannot make excuses for their emotional state anymore. They're going to, if they, if they love the Lord, if they truly want to be with him, if they can recognize his love for them, they're going to have to fight for it today. They're going to have to fight for it every single moment. They're going to have to keep this negative energy away from them. They're going to have to immerse themselves in the truth of our Lord. That's the only way they're going to be able to survive. You know, in this time that's coming, which is coming quickly, I mean, like within weeks, people are going to be thrust into, they're, they're going to have ideas and things that they didn't think they had. Now, some people may say, well, you know, all my thoughts are my own. Then why would God say, take, take captive your thoughts? Why would he say that? Why would he say, die to your flesh daily? Why would he say the flesh and the spirit war continuously? Why are those things said? Because we have the power to overcome our own flesh, because the darkness in this world is about to be pulled out of everything. Everything with darkness in it, that darkness is about to surface in a way that no one ever forecasted or thought possible, but it's absolutely going to take place. And the only way a person can overcome this is through the true power of the Holy Spirit and to stay within the blood of the Lamb. There is no hypocrisy in purity. There is no hatred in purity. There is no accusation in purity. And people need to be in that purity, in truth, not acting like they're in the purity. They have to be there. It has to be in their hearts. And they have to do everything they can do to get a heart transplant right now so they can be strong enough to endure because we all have to finish this race. None of us knows when we're absolutely going, but I, I, for one, intend to finish this race, and I'm trying to sound an alarm that something very different is going to be uh, all too evident to everybody who believes in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And without him in truth, they're not going to make it. They will not make it without him in truth. 